coach. You got any updates for Victor Hart and Canelo? Both of them today um, practice for a little bit, um, uh, but you know I still think both of them are pretty. It, it just seemed as of today uh, that both of them are going to be a little bit uh, maybe further away. Saturday may be a little. I'm, I'm hoping tomorrow night, but. Um, and I'm not trying to be coy and they, they play or not play, but both of them did go out there and go through early practice, uh, went through um, what we call dummy stuff, five on oh, you know, some shooting and that type of thing. Um, and um, uh, Curbelo actually has another doctor's appointment today. He'll actually have to get cleared by a neurologist before he's able to, to start back. And, um, and VI, Victor, excuse me, Victor Hart is more of just, getting to the point that is he's he's pain no, I don't want to say pain free but a tolerable pain tolerable so I think uh, you know tomorrow night may be a little bit of a it's possible but maybe a little bit of a stretch but today was the first day that they were able to both kind of get out there and move around a little bit uh, what were, can you say what the two official injuries are uh, Victor Hart is a subluxation he hyper which <laughs> He hyper basically in our my my verbiage. He hyper extended his knee, just landed wrong, didn't have. But it, the good, the positive part about it is it's not any type of structural damage. The uh, uh, Todd McCall, who's an incredible uh, trainer for us, sports does uh, head of sports medicine here at USM. Of course, he was with us um, at Monroe, and he said that uh, those things can take about two weeks. Uh, to, to maybe possibly come back. Sometimes they can come back a little bit sooner, but he said it was it was it was a, as bad of that as uh, that type of injury as, as as you can have. But uh, max of that's about two weeks. So hopefully a little bit sooner. Of course Thursday would be a week. We're still less than a week. Um, but anyway, we'll just kind of wait and see. But it was good to see him out there trying to go a little bit today. And the same with Corbello. Coach, how do you expect the team to step up? Just you know, if, if you're going to miss yeah, these guys, yeah, you know, we're really, you know, we're down to nine scholarship players. Uh, uh, you know, without without Neft Alvarez, of course, lose him in the fall. Uh, Lee Biat, of course, has ACL tear in the fall, and then and these two guys. So we're down to nine scholarship guys, and and you know, when you do that, that happens, and it's we just have to. They got to do a better job coaching, and, and, and our players that we have to circle the wagons, and everybody's just got to do a little bit more. And uh, it's not optimal. Um, of course, not happy with the way that we played, even under those circumstances Saturday. And of course, we paid the price for it. Um, I think I think we'll bid a better effort tomorrow. And I, and I don't think it was lack of effort. I just, it, you know, we play over in Monroe on a Thursday night, and uh, we have one day at, we take those two injuries and. And of course, at the time, you're still kind of hoping both of those guys can go on Saturday. And you know, neither one of them were really, really of course, we didn't feel good about it after the game, but they weren't ruled out till Friday. We had one practice to kind of uh, put a whole new lineup in there. And uh, But you know, I, I, again, even with that said, I, 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 I like the players that we have. Our depth may just be a little bit short. But you know, Kobe Montgomery and, and, and Donovan Ivory, these are good basketball players. Um, of, of course, Mo Arnold, AC. Uh, Victor uh, uh, Waco um, and, and you know the, the other guys that have been playing a little bit. Uh, our issue the other day, we got some pretty severe foul trouble, ended up pretty deep into our bench. You know, um, but I think everybody's just got to circle the wagons. They got to tighten their belt up, and everybody, you know, when somebody in your family gets down, and, and I'm sure it's the same way with y'all's families, you get down on your luck a little bit. Everybody has to help a little bit, do a little bit more, and um, that's what we have to do. And it starts with me. Um, to be to be honest with you, uh, I I think I understand the question, Hunter. And no, it is if you meant do we do we have a, a plan B uh, or C? Maybe even at that point, um, uh, anticipating injuries. Um, not necessarily. I made the decision on Saturday to go with who I thought were our. It, it, based on the type of team that we're playing, and we got into a little bit odd lineup, but we still should have been, we still should have been okay. Uh, but we just, we just didn't. 
uh, execute well enough or play well enough or coach well enough, all the different things. But no, I, I you know, to be very frank with you, um, now I think when you have all of your players available, yes, you should be able to plug and play a little bit. But it, during the type of players that we lost, uh, you know, you, you're talking about 30 points of, of uh, offense, basically, uh, between the two players. Um, uh, Victor Hart had 14 rebounds when he went out, basically the 10 and a half, 11 minute mark or whenever he went out in the second half. And uh, so, so those were, and, and, and again, he has the ability to guard multiple positions. Of course, Corbello is a difference maker as well. So it was, uh, we, we do not have a, necessarily have a, a injury plan uh, until that happens. And, uh, you know, we just, we just anticipate next man up. Maybe, maybe we should, uh, but I've, I've never coached in, in, with anticipation of having injuries. Well, I'm coach. Uh, oh. No, I was just going to ask you, Coach, I'm sorry. Um, with there being no automatic uh, NIT or uh, for the conference champion regular season, do you feel like that, that gives you a little more leeway not to rush back, try not to get yep. back, maybe give them an extra Yes. Well, well. First, first and foremost, yeah. Great, great point. He first, first and foremost. I want to be very clear. Uh, I would never. I'm, I'm going to be this way, just because I think it's the right thing to do. We're never going to push a player back to come back. Um, it has to be more of a, a of a mutual thing. Of course, I rely so much on our our medical staff, and I'll say this: Southern Miss has incredible, the best I that that, and I've talked to a lot of coaches because of the two hospital systems here, the specialists that we happen to have here in Hattiesburg because of our location, and Todd McCall, our training staff. I, we have the best, I think, as good as uh, elite as anybody in the country in terms of our, our medical resources. And, um, and I'm never going to put a player's um, health at stake or his future at stake to try to get him back to a point before he, he is physically ready to go without any fear of injuries. I'll just never do it. And um, when the trainer says he can go and the doctors say he can go, then, then he's gonna go. But you're making, the point that you're making is, is now, unfortunately, and I, I vehemently ad disagree with it, with the rules that the NCAA made after the, uh, the fall, that there's no, there's no more automatic bid for the conference champion, regular season champion. Now, what? Yeah, is there some pride involved in that? Absolutely. And do, are we the defending champion? Do we still want to do it? We're one game out. You know, as of right now, had we won Saturday, we'd have been still tied for first place. But with that being said, it is it 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 doesn't behoove you to try to rush one back and and then hurt you in the long run when the real deal here is there. There's two. Uh, the, the most important things for us right now are to finish in the top four, okay, because that you get a double buy, right, and then, of course, win that tournament. So we want to be, of course, full strength, as we keep telling our, our – the coaches kind of talk among ourselves. And, you know, we say we want to have all of our horses in the stable uh, being able to run the race when it comes down at the, at the end of this coming uh, – of February uh, when we go to the conference tournament. That's, that's the situation. But you're making a great point. Um, it's unfortunate to lose some in the short term, but I would rather maybe not be at full strength because I don't want to use the term we, we lose. But if, I'd rather I'd rather not be at, at at full strength now and take the risk of bringing a guy back too early, as opposed to I would rather have a guy ready at the end of the season because we allowed him to be fully healthy. We use the same exact philosophy, Heath, with NEFTA, and uh, you know. There's a there, you know, if we really pushed it, probably, and, and Nefta's itching to do it, we probably could push him on out there, you know. But I don't think that's to his best interest, and I don't think it's to even the program's best interest uh, because I don't I don't think he would be fully healed. And I think we 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 would be taking a chance with that young man's future. I'm not going to do it with with these two guys. Uh, I'm not going to do it with anybody. When they're ready to go, they'll be ready to go. Do I hope it's tomorrow night? Yeah, I do. And it was it was a breath of fresh air to see them out there moving around at the beginning of practice today. Um, and and, and I, I, as far as uh, Net, uh, excuse me, Andre is concerned, we'll know a little bit more this afternoon after he comes back from the doctor. He has an appointment at one o'clock. Is it is it more is it more important to you to be hot at the end of the season? Absolutely. The top four, South Alabama. Got hot last they year. They sure did. At the end of the season, 
You know, South Alabama. Uh, gosh, that's that's pretty pretty. That's a tough. I'd rather do both. <laughs> um, but but you know, South Alabama is a great example. They were one in seven last year. Coach Riley got rid of a few guys he didn't feel like that were totally bought in. They stayed the course. They 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 didn't listen to all the doubters and the complainers and the internet heroes and all that kind of stuff. And they they just stayed the course. And, uh, and and look what they did. And they came within a few points. But I, I will say this, had they not had to play that extra game, you know, uh, uh, probably they were on their fourth game in, in uh, four nights, I believe, or maybe four and five. Um, maybe that had quite enough legs because they were playing as well as anybody. And again, they were just a, a basket or two short in the championship. And of course, we had a tough draw with them and win it. And you have to play them as the eighth seed. That was kind of crazy too. Uh, uh, to, to clarify real quick, uh, you said Corbello is his time frame is to be determined, or is it looking like it, two weeks? No, no, no. That was Victor Hart. Okay. Victor Victor Hart. They, uh, according to Todd McCall, the injury um, is, a, is generally a two-week uh, recovery injury. And so now he said possibly they could come back a little bit sooner, to, but that's totally dependent on the individual and how they react to it and the severity. But uh, according to Todd, that way he had a pretty good, severe subluxation, in, uh, which is a hyperextension. So you're still waiting for info on Cabello? Uh, and, and then Cabello, we, we have to, he has to be, because if y'all understand his history, uh, he he uh, had some severe um, uh, concussion issues at both Illinois and St. John. Uh, has come in with that, and we have to. It's not that he's his concussion has been ruled out, um, uh, but he has concussion-like symptoms in the in the sense his he's got blurry vision, he's got uh, migraine headaches, um, uh, nauseous, and uh, when he gets to moving around and so forth, and of course. Uh, that, so his 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 is a little bit more detailed, um, but it, but again he's beginning he's feeling better, um, and, and again he was able to get out there move around a little bit get some shots up before practice and participated in, in some of our early practice drills today, just no contact. Yeah, no, you know you spent probably the latter part of the front of the season without him, Carbello, yeah. and then I think a game or two without Hart. So how does that kind of go into your yeah. philosophy? I, you this know, week? it's. it's must not go to church enough or something. <laughs> I, you know, I do, uh, but um, it, it's it's just part of it. You know, you know and um, it's it's unfortunate. I, you know, I, I really, as we entered the season, and again, I kind of back on what he said. Um, I, I I think we've seen a high and a low of our teams. Uh, of course, the high. I think you saw what our team can be against James Madison and Georgia State last week. I think you've seen some lows. Certainly don't want to disrespect any opponent, you know, that we've lost to, but games that we haven't performed uh, like we needed to. Uh, the lack of consistency has been frustrating. I, I, I blame myself for that. Um, uh, I think that we do have a few guys that are trying to do trying to do so much uh, that they 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 eventually force some things. And, uh, but our, I tell you what has been outstanding, our effort has been outstanding, our attitude, our practice habits, all has been good. But um, I, I hope I can, I've answered your question, Demo, the way you ask it, because uh, I, I think everybody's seen, we've seen, of course, what we think can, can maybe be, maybe the best team in the league, you know? And, but we've also shown where uh, if we don't play well, we, 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 we could be one of the bottom teams. And, um, it's, it's, and I think that the league itself, y'all have seen it, of course, I think it's going to be the team that can be the most consistent. I, I don't know if it's necessarily the most talented team, but I don't think there's a lot of difference between the first, who, who, whoever the first team is and, and whoever the 14th seed is. I really don't. There's not a, we have great parity in the league. And um, I, I, I think the old adage of the team that can hold on to home and, and, and of course, hold serve at home, defend the home back, your home court, uh, which is, of course, what we were able to do last year, and go sneak four or five on the road. We've gotten one down. You know, we try to be telling our players, uh, hey, just don't don't make it more than it is. We're, we're, we played five. We're one game under 500, not happy with our overall record. But, you know, we're still one game out. Yeah. You know, we could have we could be tied at first. So we just got to try to figure it out. But it would be, it would be great if the Lord would bless us with – to be able to have our guys consistently. Right. You know, if we could just, we, I felt so good 
coming out of and, and confident, and I know our players did too, coming out of last Saturday's game. We beat a good Georgia State team uh, on Thursday, beat, of course, a top 20 team, a very good basketball team on Saturday. And then, and then you know, boom. I mean, it's, you know, instead of instead of we were talking about building and creating momentum, of course you you can't. Uh, you know, um, those things happen, and and it's unfortunate. But uh, I, I think that we still have a lot in front of us. Two yeah. more questions. Do you have just a scouting report on Arkansas State? Yes, uh, I tell you, they're much much better. Uh, Coach Hodgkins. Uh, he, uh, of course, has been a long time assistant in Alabama. Very similar style to Alabama. They shoot an incredible amount of threes, and they, I thought he did a great job of retaining some of their higher achieving players from last year. Particularly, you can you can kind of see what he likes, and and, and I like it too. The guys that can really shoot the basketball um, from last from the you know the, you know they had a coaching change uh, from from the year before, and then they brought in some high level transfers, which of course seems to be the name of our game and in Division One football, basketball, and baseball now. So, but they brought some really good players in. And, um, but but they, I, they were actually my favorite, uh, my, excuse me, my dark horse favorite. Uh, I, I picked um, James Madison to win it and Appalachian State to be right there. And, and when asked what who I thought the dark horse would be, I thought it would be Arkansas State. And they're, they're kind of proving that. So, uh, but they shoot a lot of threes. We got to, we got to really get out there and guard them. We can let them catch and shoot. They've got all, all five of their players that they put on the floor are capable of, of shooting it. And Fields is scoring it at a, Caleb Fields is short, scoring it at a really high clip. And they're very well coached on both ends of the floor. Coach, uh, the last time you guys were here at home, it was the big win over JMU. Now school's back in session. Uh, you know. I know that it hasn't gone the way lately. You guys have walked through the injuries, but just being back with the students, yes. how much of a boost could that really give Huge. you guys? I, I hope anybody that sees or hears this understands our gratefulness to the impact that the fans at Reed Green have. If, if you, and y'all maybe have, if you've heard the other coaches talk about it, if you've heard other players, the imp, uh, Coach, Coach Byington from um, uh, James Madison even last week, the impact and in, in the Coliseum was half half full last week. If if they understood how important their attendance and engagement in, in the games at our arena, I think it impacts winning more than any other arena in the Sun Belt Conference. I know it does. Uh, our fans are, are, are enthusiastic. The place in itself is very loud, and and they, of course, our I think we've won 19 out of 20 or 20 out of 21 here. Um, Jack could tell you exactly what it is, but it's something like that. And um, so it, they, they, and our fans have had a lot to do with that. It's that's not all our players or the coaches or, I mean, our, our fans, our fa our players feed off the energy and they know to appreciate it. So, with the fact that the fans that school starts back, our, our students are back. I think it's Greek night. I think you'll see a lot of the uh, fraternities and sororities get in here tomorrow night and uh, can really help us. And then, again, right now, we're kind of in a buy-in time mode. We need, we need to be able to survive waiting on these two, you know, starters to get back into the lineup. Everyone good? Yep. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all for y'all's coverage. I appreciate it.